Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Mathilde and I am the Digital Marketing Analyst at Amity. Um, we're thrilled to be hosting this webinar with customer success expert and thought leader Yuri Zips from CS7 Practice. Um, so this week's topic is how to become a more proactive uh, CSM with productivity tools. And this is the second webinar of a five-part series focusing on scaling customer success. So our first session was about automated playbooks. And if you missed it uh, and you want to see a recording, then just send me an email or answer to one of my emails and um, I'll send you a link. So a couple of housekeeping notes before we get started. Um, so join us on Twitter. We'll be using the hashtag CSWebinar and uh, don't hesitate to share uh, any screenshots with us or let us know what you think throughout the session. Um, we would love for this to be as interactive as possible. So at any point, don't hesitate to send us your questions in the question section of your GoToWebinar side panel. Um, and uh, we'll be sending the recording as well as an awesome success plan template that you read prepared for you guys um, sometime by the end of the week. So stay tuned and uh, you'll hear from us shortly. And uh, on that note, Irit, uh, I'm going to hand things over to you. Uh, I'll be around and I'll, I'll jump back in when we get questions from the audience. But uh, yeah, thanks everyone and thanks Irit. Hey, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Irit Izips, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer and uh, de facto a customer success consultant for many companies. And I'm excited to be here today with you. Um, it's going to be such an exciting um, webinar. We're going to go through one of my absolutely favorite uh, content with you, which is how to become more productive, which will lead you to become more proactive and strategic. And I'm going to tie these two um, concepts together throughout the webinar. What you will see is um, I'm, I'm going to go through three things that most of my customers are working with me to become more proactive and productive. And these topics are uh, essentially the foundation to becoming uh, a more productive team. <clears throat> We're going to go through uh, different topics. I'm going to share with you that in a moment. And um, a few things on my end. Uh, first of all, there's a lot of content, and um, we're going to encourage you to be very engaged in the in the webinar so that it's a two-way conversation versus me talking at you uh, with some slides, which are not, it's just never, uh, to me, a very exciting way of doing things. And so we might go over a little bit, and um, more than one hour. It might take anywhere between 60 to 70 to 80 minutes. So if you have a meeting happening right after this webinar. You have two options. You can either try to push it back or, um, you know, this session will be recorded. So you can always finish seeing it um, at a later time. Uh, that being said, we do have two bonuses uh, that we give away during this webinar. So if you do happen to stick around through the end, you will be able to capitalize on them. Um, and then, oh, one more ask, and this is kind of like a surprise, but uh, hopefully you take this on. Look, uh, we do these things so that we can share our knowledge with you, and it's part of just being proactively active in this customer success community. Um, and one of the things that I'd love to ask for you is that if you see anything that's valuable for you, that you learn something new that's exciting, that you think is worthwhile sharing, and you have a Twitter account, take a screenshot. Right? Take a screenshot or blurb about it on Twitter. Use um, hashtag CSM productive or um, yeah, CSM productivity. Sorry, CSM productivity. And we and um, Mathilde and I will actually go through the Twitter um, uh, tweets that were done during the webinar. And the person who will tweet the most uh, will actually receive a, an, a $25 Amazon gift card just as a thank you for myself and Amity for being proactive and sharing the awareness for these kind of webinars that we put up um, and the knowledge with uh, your customer success community. Okay, um, if there's anything that you did take away from this webinar, of course, and you applied it and it works, please contact me. I love hearing success stories as well. So before we start, um, 
you know, I'm, I'm from Sunnyvale, California. I'd love to hear where you come from and, uh, you, you know, your name, where you come from, what company, what, what country. Uh, so if you see there's a questions, this is a good practice for your questions uh, uh, section on the right, on your right hand side, there is a section that says questions where you can put in, <clears throat> yes, I did say CSM productive for the hashtag for the Twitter. Now, if you if you care uh, to put in some comments, just comment your name, where you come from, what what company and what country. Um, so we have. I'm just going to increase that. Okay, so we got um, cool. Kristen from it's going so, Brad Seaman from Clear Company from Collins, Colorado. Uh, David here from Slide Bean in Costa Rica, Sarah Lupio from Toronto, Canada, Alex from San Luis Obispo in California. Woo -woo! <laughs> so many unique places. Uh, we got somebody from uh, Pennsylvania, Jim from Frontline Education. Uh, we got somebody from Axios Systems, uh, San Diego, Boulder City, Adam Wig from Make Music. So pretty cool. Uh, Goes by is really fast. So Carolyn from uh, New York. We have somebody from Wisconsin. I think Laurel. So really, really cool. Thanks for sharing that. And uh, Texas, howdy. Um, yep. All right. Very, very cool. Uh, this is a good practice because I want this webinar to be super engaging. Um, I'm going to ask you a ton of questions and ask for your feedback. So if you have a question for me during the webinar, do not hesitate to ask me. I will answer almost all the questions. If you've seen my webinars before, uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. Okay, I'm going to kill the camera so that we have a good Wi-Fi, and um, if there's any issues, Matilda's going to dial my cell phone. All right, let's start. Okay, so the next question is more about the webinar itself, and uh, this is going to be a poll, so no need to answer in the questions. I'm just going to fire it up, just so that you can see where everybody is. Um, so I'm going to ask you, how proactive are you as a CSM? And this is really your uh, way of perceiving yourself, and so you can now start voting. I'd love to see, you know, from your own concepts, how, how do you perceive yourself to be uh, proactive. So I can see most of you think you could be somewhat more proactive. Uh, very little of you think it's very proactive. And if you think you're very proactive, that's good. That we're still going to have some stuff for you on how to be also more productive so you can be even more, enjoy me being proactive. 37% of you, let me just show you. Um, I think what I do here is. Okay. So now you can see the poll's results. Most of you um, <clears throat> think we are so reactive. It's a bummer. Thankfully, not a, lot, a whole lot of you. Um, and most of you are somewhere in the middle. You think you should be more, a lot more proactive than you are right now, or at least there's some way for you to be um, a little bit uh, more proactive with, uh, you know, just just tweaking maybe some of the processes and the tools that you're using. All of this is great. Here's the thing. I'm going to share what my clients are doing right now that works. And so we're going to give you the playbook on how to be more productive, which will result in being more proactive. I'm excited. So you are right now in the right webinar. If you feel like uh, you really never seem to have enough time in the day to be as proactive or as strategic with your clients as you'd like to be, and you're definitely in the right webinar if way too often you find yourself wishing you just had more time in the day to do all those great uh, playbooks that your company has told you you needed to do as a CSM. And you're in the right webinar right now, this moment. If you know there must be some things that some other customer success managers and teams are doing that makes them way more proactive than you, and you just want to learn what those are. So the good news is. <clears throat> look, uh, being proactive is tough. It's not something that's just easy to do. And you know it because you live it day after day. Uh, the, the secret to being proactive with your customers and strategic is nurturing your skills to being productive and getting the right processes and 
I'm not going to share like all the secrets of this webinar, but really designing a framework that allows you to be a, uh, productive. So today I'm going to show you three things that you and your team can do to um, essentially put the framework in place to allow your team to be more productive. My, my childhood, this is not like to imagine my father as he was young just before he got married and came back to Israel. He used to be a sailor or a cadet on a really big ship. And some of the things that resonate with me is he, I just love picturing him like that versus like you know, one of these hard workers on the ship. I think it's more fun. But essentially, he worked on a really big ship. And as I was a child, he kept repeating these stories on how they had these repetitive, uh, repetitive processes that was were so dialed in, that were so well defined that the machine, the, the the ship essentially worked like a well oiled machine. And as I grew up and uh, became a management consultant and worked with clients on optimizing processes, I became a very um, passionate person about templates and optimizing processes <clears throat> and taking repetitive tasks and you know leveraging playbooks to make them happen more efficiently. Today I actually own a customer success consulting practice called the CSM practice. We have about 15 team members on the in the in, at the firm um, together, I think in that last two and a half years or so, we had at least 3,000 hours of customer success consulting services to various clients. And I have some of the logos here, not all of them. Uh, we work hard to come up with playbooks for companies and making sure that they're well defined based on best practices. And the things we love to, to do the most is optimize the strategy for customer success and apply technology to make sure that they have visibility to see what processes work, that the processes are applied in a manner that's efficient, that makes their team more proactive and more productive with their time. So I'd love to talk to you more about what we do for customers, but the, about the webinar, I'm actually going to share a few of those things that I have found to be very uh, useful with my clients. And so I Today, after all these years of just being management consultant and specifically working with customer success clients, I can definitely say with confidence that there's a system behind creating scalability and efficiency. And if all my clients follow this approach, we can systemize how customer success managers cater to their smallest clients as well as their largest one and how they can become much more efficient and productive with, with the strategic ones as well. And so, again, being proactive uh, as a CSM, it just doesn't just happen. Um, to become proactive, the secret is to turn your one-off playbooks into an efficient, repeatable success. And today I'm going to show you my playbook working with clients to turn them into an efficient. And so this is something that you can do yourself even without being uh, my client. So before I go into the content, I think we have some questions. Matilde, do you want to uh, share some of these questions so we, before we move on? Uh, yep, I'm not. Um... I think someone just had a comment, uh, you know, for the first poll that we did together. Um, they said very proactive, but it's hard to scale. So it seems like this is the right webinar for everyone. But if everyone else, anyone else has any questions, uh, as we're saying, don't hesitate to send them in throughout the, the presentation. Awesome. Okay. So the three things that I typically do with clients is ask them three questions. And the three questions really lead to three things that we actually end up doing. So bear with me on this one, because some of them would seem very basic, but I promise you in this webinar, it's going to be nothing but basic. I'm going to show you the advanced way of doing these things. So hold on to your seats, be patient. We're gonna go on a ride. So the three questions I have sessions with my clients in terms of really making sure we're answering them fully. 
is does your account segmentation work for you? Are your playbooks well documented? With emphasis on well. And did you, do you need to invest more in systems and tools? And I'm going to give you the exact path that we're walking through in order to make a change and impact the teams through the, the discussions that, uh, and the, the process that we go through in answering these three questions. So question number one is all about the account segmentation. And I'm going to show you exactly um, how I not only make sure that they do some sort of an account segmentation, but make sure that the account segmentation work for their teams to make sure that they become more productive and more proactive with their clients. So <clears throat> the second question is really about the playbooks. So if you already segmented your client base, but uh, you and the team are still fairly reactive, really want to listen carefully for this section. So I'm going to explain some of the fundamentals on not just how to do the segmentation right, but also how to define and document the playbooks correctly. And I'm going to give you some examples of how not to do it and how to do it. So for both um, tech touch as well as high touch. So everybody will have something for, for something. And last is the productivity tools. And I think that's going to be the most fun section of the webinar. This is where I'm going to share you some of the recommended customer success tools that are currently used by customer success teams to just become more productive and more efficient with their time. And I think this is going to be a fun, fun way to answer uh, this question. We're going to have a ton of examples. OK. So <clears throat> take a screenshot of this slide because to really be scalable um, and productive and proactive, you actually, there's a lot of things that you need to do besides productivity tools and productivity, um, you know, not, not just systems, but actually tools that you can apply as a manager, management tools. Uh, because there's so many aspects to it, we actually came up with a series. Um, and you can see one is already recorded and available. This is now the, the one that you do that you're listening to now, but there's three more. So my suggestion, block your calendars. We actually have a page with all the information about each one of them on Amity's uh, website. And I encourage you to go in and, and either register to their newsletter so you can get uh, notifications when the event pages are on and you can register ahead of time. But even so, just block your calendar so that you guarantee to have time to attend those. And so after I go through this entire webinar, what if you still need help after the webinar to get started? Because as you know, a lot of times we just listen to a presentation and we still don't know what to do after. So I made sure that you have something uh, to be to start something out. So you'll get two free bonuses from me. Uh, one is, um, so I'll, I'll tell you more about them, but one is a template that just immediately get you started with documenting playbook really quickly. And the other one, you'll have to stay till the end. I'm just going to spring it at you and um, you'll have to take action to get it really quickly because I'm only going to give 10 of those. But both of these bonuses will get you to be more proactive and more efficient instantly after this webinar, even if it's just, you know, one little thing at a time. Okay, so let's talk about account segmentation. I mean, um, most of you are probably rolling your eyes and like, really? That's so basic. Of course we do this. I know you do, I know. Uh, but believe you me, <laughs> how many times have I walked into a customer, they said that they did segmentations, and then we found out that it's not really done properly. So I'm going to show you how to make sure that you do segmentations, but it actually works for you. Um, and kind of like the things that I've found with other customers. So most of the customers that I've found and, and worked with or just interviewed, you know, they, they typically do their segmentation based on ARR or the overall value of the customer's uh, contract, or maybe they do it by licensees. Some of them do it by client size. So my question is to you, I think this is kind of interesting for everyone because we have a fairly large uh, attendance uh, today. Uh, so what I'd like to, to, to do is basically do a quick a quick poll and um, we'll do it in uh, yeah just ask you uh, in the questions can you uh, quickly share with me what what kind of criteria are you using 
to segment your client base. And I'm going to share a few of the comments that are being uh, added into the into the questions segment. So to the right on your menu, just go ahead and plug a few of those in, and I'll call those out. So some of them are doing it based on MRR and product. Uh, what is TCV? That's total contract value. Strategic value, um, let me just make it bigger. And then we have service package, ARR, Emily Hayes says, by sales reps who secured the agreement. Really interesting. Uh, Brad says, number of licenses, product. Justin says, number of licensees. Um, Margo, subscription package and strategic value. Uh, geographic location from Kelly. Uh, we have potential monthly spend from Alice Dale. I need to make this bigger. Um, we have logo value and ARR from Sarah Mason. Product maturity from Liz Lee. Uh, let's see if I can find anything. NPS from Paul Wilmot. Geographic location and MRR. Okay, so really cool examples. You can see this is a lot more ways to segment your uh, customer base. And I appreciate the comments. This is really great. Here's what I found that sometimes my clients lack. They, they find some sort of a segment. And by the way, there's more ways to do this. And this is just, and I, I'll show you how most of my clients use the segmentation. And I think that's lacking too, but we'll talk about that more. What I'd like you to really think about is, are you segmenting your clients to defend the revenues that you're getting from them. So really think through, am I really truly properly defending the risk by doing the segmentation the way that I do? I had one client when I walked in the door, we did a, a quick segmentation uh, exercise. And the way that they segmented their clients was based on size, which totally makes sense, right? Here's what happened though. Some of their biggest clients actually had less employees than some of the bigger companies that they were working with. So for example, Google might have purchased 10 licenses because it was some uh, you know, uh, small team that was engaged with their solution. However, they might have had a smaller client somewhere in Minnesota that had 50 sales reps and all of them uh, had a license and they were actively using it. And so you have to really think you know, despite my initial criteria, is there a process in place to bump customers to a higher level of segment so that I can defend the risk properly? So that's my only takeaway here for you. And uh, we're going to go over this in a little bit more detail in the next webinar, um, as I showed you on the webinar list. The rule of thumb, if you have less than 50 customers, please don't bother with segmentation especially if you're a startup. If you have 50 customers, you just do a high touch model. You don't really need to segment. Um, and, and of course, there's always exceptions, but that's your rule of thumb, okay? So why do we do segmentations? Uh, why is the risk diff I don't know. Okay, what, what, why is this uh, so important? Um, when, we do, when we finally do the segmentation and we defend different risks level, meaning, um, there's more revenue that we need to defend or there's more opportunity that we need to defend, then we want to invest more time. And so the Goldilocks rule, remember that one? Not too much, not too little, just right. That just means that you want to design the right level of engagement with your clients based on that revenue or opportunity with the client that you're defending. And Notice that I'm not using ARR. It's just the risk or the opportunity. That could mean many, many different things. So that is critical for productivity because if you spend too much time on smaller customers or the same level of time on all of your customers, regardless of the opportunity or the revenue or the, the assets that you're trying to protect, then you might not be very productive. You might just not be very efficient. Okay, so now I'm going to ask you two questions. You may not understand the connection first, or maybe you do, but I'd like to fire off this poll and say, just so I can understand where everybody's coming from, and say, have you done a RACI chart 
before. And so I'm going to share that now. Okay. So right now, I, I think, you know, it's as I'm as I expected. About 54% of you voted. I'm going to give you a few more seconds. About 60%. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to close it now. If you haven't voted yet, I'll give you three more seconds. All right. Let's share that because there's not a lot of difference anyways. Okay, so about almost 70% of you have never done a racy chart before. Now, this is critical to being productive, and I'm going to talk about it in a second. Before I do, um, I'm going to ask you one more question before I get to my next slide, is have you created a staffing model, and specifically in the capacity of uh, CSM, so I'm sharing my my screen now uh, with you. Please go ahead and vote. Have you done a staffing model based on, you know, just to assess whether you have the right amount of customer success managers based on what you want to do with your clients? Okay, kind of like uh, same results. About 60% said no and 40% said yes. So it seems like the staffing model is a little bit more um, popular, if you will, or more common for teams to use. I actually think that both solutions, both tools, productive, this is, this is key to being productive. If you do a race HR and a staffing model to assess your segmentation, you're a better chance of making sure that you know what the client activities are, you know, and who's going to do what, when, who needs to be involved in the process. Sometimes we just end up doing too much, whereas if we've gone through a RACI chart, which really means, okay, here are my client activities that we want to use in a, in a proactive manner for this engaging engagement model, and here's everybody else that should be involved in this activity so that we can do this activity the most efficient manner. And so who needs to be aware of this? Who needs to collaborate with us as we're doing this activity? And you want to have not just yourself and, and your CSM team, but everybody in the company, meaning all the key departments participate in this activity. Um, and this would increase the collaboration across the company and provide you with more productiveness overall. Now, the other thing that we sometimes leverage the RACI chart is to add additional um, columns. So, for example, we can say, does the activity that we're defining, yeah, we know which resources within the company do we need, but which segment does this apply to? How often during the year should we do this? How long does it take to do each activity for each one of the resources? And that just leads into a very efficient way of doing a staffing model. Uh, which really lays down, okay, now that we know which activities we're going to do for which segment, we want to align how often these activities should be performed to defend the risk and the opportunities in each uh, segment of clients, how long each activity is going to take in terms of hours, and then it will give you the answer of how many people do you actually need given the number of customers you currently have to support these activities. And a lot of times, I'm going to give you a story of one of my clients. She actually went and she asked the CFO, you know, when they were doing the budget, she asked whether she could uh, hire two more customer success managers to manage the increase of customer, customer, the increase in customer base. So every year you're going to have new customers. Some customers are going to leave, hopefully not, but you'll need to increase the size of your customers. So she was asking for two customer success managers. And, um, what happened is the CFO told her, you know what, you should go and do a staffing model with your uh, with the operations manager, and then let's talk about this. So before she approved it, she kind of wanted to know. And they went ahead and they did a staffing model, and at the end of that, they figured that they actually needed eight more customer success managers. So if you don't, uh, if you feel like you're very reactive and there's not enough time in the day, a staffing model can kind of tell you the story of why that is. And this could be a great uh, way to justify 
additional resources to upper management to kind of say, all right, this is the exercise that we've done, and this is what we need in terms of capacity to really continue the engagement model the way it is. Now, in her story, <laughs> when the operation uh, analyst came back and said, well, we came up with eight, of course, that didn't get approved either, but that's why we have more ways to become more productive if that accidentally happens to you. So um, it's not the end of the world, but you could, but this is why this is so important. When you do a RACI chart, when you do your staffing model, you can identify, do I have too many activities defined for each engagement model? Can I even do what I plan on doing? If I don't have the staff and I didn't get approval for additional CSMs, can I cut down or change the type of activities that I currently have assigned for my CSMs? And then do I need more resources? So if I don't get approval for additional CSMs, can I leverage other resources within the company? And the RACI model and the work that you would do with these additional departments could really help create even existing processes and make them more uh, efficient. And so that's why these two assessments are so critical. Uh, Matil, do we have any questions about that? that, that uh, not about not about this specifically, no. But okay. if anyone has any questions, that would be a good time. And I know I forgot to share the results of the polls. I'm sharing them now before we go continue for the other. Um, oh, someone does have an uh, a question. Um, Ashley is asking if you have an example of a staffing model. Ah, I don't mm -hmm. on this, but I will on the next webinar. <laughs> so if you join the account segmentation webinar on this day, I will have more details about these kind of things and I think this is really critical for you to become more productive. It's just that it's it's a whole its own beast if you will. So for scaling customer success teams, you want to nail all of this. Uh, so I'm definitely going to share some more examples and more stories uh, in that webinar. Awesome. Yeah, that's what we're doing a series, right? Such a broad yeah. topic and they all impact each other. So I think this is a great <laughs> order for the next one. <laughs> exactly. All right. So documentations. Let's say this is what you got. How do you do more with what you have? The first thing that you want to do is document. Document, document, deck, document. Then you want to start with doc documenting your recyclables. If you have an email, like a welcome email that you always uh, send and always type again and again. Uh, this is this is the one that you want to make sure that um, you have it stored in some sort of a template so you can just copy paste it next time and maybe just use a few uh, changes to customize it for the next client. And uh, this is critical because there's so many systems out there and tools that you can use for this. I personally use HubSpot and ClearSlide. You can use a text more on that tool later on and obviously you can use your own CSM operation system which most of the CSM tools and I know Amity definitely has that as well will allow you to store email templates and send your customers an email directly from that system so not only you can leverage that systematically like the same template you don't have to write it again and again but you can also track whether or not they opened it and have that in your system of record, the fact that you did engage with them. And that's that's me <laughs> typing away <laughs> uh, emails to clients, and I'm sure you, you all kind of look like that every now and then. Okay, so what what should you document? If you're, if you're looking at uh, clients uh, of mine that you know I've worked with to, to do the documentation, you'd be surprised how many times have I walked in the door and I said, well, do you have a process for onboarding? Yes. Uh, well, where are the templates? You know, when you, you send the, your executive sponsor at the beginning of it or the, the slides or where's your welcome email and everybody types their own. Don't do that. Like, I want you to think about not just templates. I, I had another client just last week. He asked me, oh, can you work with us on optimizing our, our QBR process? I'm like, sure. And they said, well, okay, well, we just want you to review our, our PowerPoint templates for the QBR. I'm like, okay, great. Where's the playbook? And they just looked at me. They don't have a document that says, what do you do before the QBR? What questions do you ask during the QBR? 
what are the templates to follow up with after the QBR to make sure that whatever you agreed on with your customer is actually followed up on so there's no success plan template. Man, I'm telling you, this is crazy. Like these are really good companies that are doing really well and they have the funding to do it. They just don't have these processes in place. So if I can just convey one thing to you, start documenting and then uh, create a shared folder or just share your templates on your CSM team uh, system so that you you share your best practices and what works with the entire team. This is the thing, we wanna be a CSM heroes. Just like I asked you to share these kind of slides with on Twitter with everyone, you wanna share your knowledge and what works with your teammates. I've done a CSM bootcamp uh, maybe not even six months ago. Uh, great team, so, so strong team. Uh, everybody's so high level, I was just floored. And as we were talking and doing these discussions between the team members, it was shocking to see that they didn't even know that someone had an Excel spreadsheet where they did some sort of like a health score on their customers so that they can prioritize their own book of business and keep track of when they last approached them so they you know so that they would know who do they need to proactively email it's it's and so as they were talking about this they just created a shared folder and they start dumping the templates that works for them with the other team members and that just that just doing that with your teams you're going to be so much more productive because you wouldn't have to invent or reinvent the wheel with every client or um, with your own book of business because somebody might have just already resolved this for you. So really quickly, I'd like to ask you and kind of be engaged and share with others and be, be your own customer success hero with this community. Uh, what have you documented? Was there anything on this list that you have documented to be more productive with your customers that I haven't shared so far in that other um, slide deck, the, the other slide? Yeah, and while people do that, um, Marcy asked if we had any examples of those things on the list, and yes, we do. At the end of the webinar, we'll be sending the uh, success plan that you worked on um, to everyone. And so just to explain, someone, Ava, was asking for a clarification on what a success plan is. Do you want to maybe just get, give a brief yeah. overview? Absolutely. So in a second, I'm actually going to share a success plan with you and kind of walk through that with you, and it's a very important concept. Um, do you have any examples? Am I just not seeing it? Still? <laughs> no, I'm not seeing any. Oh, there we go. Some email templates is a good idea. Uh, some say they're doing all of the, the ones that they've listed. This is really great. Uh, so Kelly Smith, good job on documenting all of that. That's really great. Very critical. Um, let's see. Emily Hayes. Uh, oh, this is jumping. So implementing overviews, processes, and annual report that we present to clients. Uh, Andrea, onboarding presentations, email kickoff to renewal, okay, QBR basic templates. Laura Gosh, uh, they're doing scripts for tutorials and um, knowledge base articles. They do role responsibility breakdowns and customer success timeline from kickoff to renewal. So this is really great. Uh, David Marin, we've created a sheet with mailing grid and keep our onboarding emails on intercom. Ava says uh, we have documented how to prep for certain types of meetings and decks that are used yearly. So congratulations on that. That's really great. William McLennan's, um, I, I just butchered your name. I, I'm sorry. Uh, they document playbooks and how to use internal software and system by Ava. So this is new. I actually don't really have that done in a lot of my clients. I think that's a great idea. Just document how to use any kind of internal systems and softwares. It just really does create a lot of productivity. Um, William McKinnis, standard service offerings, uh, repeatable plays, Sean Bella, onboarding in QBR decks, lots of QBR decks, knowledge base. Um, Kelly Smith says they're also doing a customer experience plan. Uh, Sarah Mason, they are documenting meeting templates and weekly emails. Yeah, let's see if I can find anything interesting that hasn't been done yet. So Tom H. Roops uh, have a standard intake survey we use to collect information for platform setup. 
and they also have a knowledge-based article, standard onboarding and training decks. William also uh, recommends documenting the ROI with the client, so they actually have a template to demonstrate what the ROI is. And Claudia Music, customer experience map for every department in the company. So that goes back to my RACI chart. Uh, that's a first step in actually doing some sort of a experience map for every document, but that's the first step you take is just defining what the RACI chart is. Okay, um, so I'm gonna uh, keep it at that and then uh, jump into the next slide. Uh, where do you store your documentation? And I think there's a lot of learnings here. So what I've seen obviously is a shared folder, either on a network, on box, or even leveraging the CSM operational system like Amity to store the email templates and other things. Um, if you have uh, used something else, I'd love to hear from you so I can share it with everyone. So Vanessa Ramirez says, we use Google Drive to document processes and templates for sharing. William says they're using SharePoint. Ava uh, Cavusi is sharing Dropbox, uh, uh, sharing everything on a uh, Dropbox shared folder and Salesforce document section. And by the way, I just spoke to another client yesterday. They're actually leveraging the, uh, the library in Salesforce for that. Um, Jim Gibson, they're using OneDrive. Google Sheets in a shared folder by Margot Clifford. Let's see. Oh. Brad Seaman is using uh, Google Drive and their CSM system, which I can't, uh, <laughs> I, can't I can't announce here, but you know, there's plenty of them. Um, let's see. Okay, uh, Laurel Gosh says they're currently on the market for a CS-specific software. So you can see here, most of you are actually using Google Drive or Dropbox. Um, and Rolf says they're actually using their own product, uh, which is a business process management system. So the takeaway here is if you have a business management system, you can definitely leverage that as well. And uh, Gonzalo Moreno says something very interesting. He says, we put together some workflow diagrams stored on Google Drive. And I got to say, some of my bigger clients, I'm talking like 70,000 customers and so, public companies, they do the same thing. So when they decide on doing new playbooks, they actually do a workflow diagram and then they detail what the playbook is about. So that's a really good practice and thanks uh, Gonzalo for sharing that. Andrea is using Confluence and also their CSM tool. So more on that in a minute. I'm going to just jump in and some of you asked me, do you have examples? Yes, I do. So I'm going to share two examples of how you could document playbooks. This is a very interesting one because sometimes your engagement model would be a tech touch, meaning you have thousands of thousands of users. And so, you know, strategic uh, high touch would be advised for your larger companies. But if you have tens of thousands of clients and each one of them maybe have one or two users, more like a B2C almost, you kind of want to define your customer playbooks. Um, this is an example of how you can do that. The point is you want to document it. Um, so this is just one example of how you could do that. Um, you have to adjust your templates to what your business process and business model is. So feel free to take a screenshot of that. And again, we, we help develop these kind of things for clients all the time, but we can't be <laughs> consultant to everyone, but I, I love sharing this with you because I think it's really great. Um, meaning it's, it's a really great way to just tackle documenting playbooks when it's a tech touch or, or whatnot. Okay, some of you asked me what's a success plan. And a success plan is, for example, your contract with your client on what you're gonna do to make them uh, get more value from your systems and solutions. Uh, this is an example of how one of my clients just uh, create a summary of all the success plans that they're going to have with their clients. So you can see that in each track, they actually identify a goal that they're going to have with uh, a goal that they want to achieve with a client. So the key here that a success plan has an objective. As you go through QBRs and meetings with clients, 
you might start defining what are your goals for that client. It could be increasing their productivity or implementing best practices so that you can become their trusted advisor. And then you need to define a project of how are you going to achieve that goal. So that's this area here. Um, maybe to implement best practices, I'm going to teach them how to use feature X so that they become um, improve their own business process. Um, and then what is the plan, okay? Maybe it's about sitting down with them, understanding their strategy, and then how they, to tie it back to how they're using the feature to get to that level of best practices. And then does, um, do we need to support them in implementation of uh, that feature with professional services? And which resources are going to be involved? This can be done like a, almost as a racy, who's responsible, who's accountable, who needs to be informed, etc. And then what is your priority? So you might actually have multiple success plans with the customer. And again, this is just like a summary of your success plan for the customer. And so for each track, you could say, okay, this is a high priority or a medium priority. And you can have up to four or five things that you're going to define as a success plan for your customers. So each one of these tracks is going to have its own project with multiple tasks and calls to action and maybe different resources, but you want to document it either in a document that you can share back with your uh, team members, your managers, and your clients. And this is where you uh, infuse change management, create enrollment conversations with your clients, and start seeding not only perceived value, but increased the chances of realizing that value. Um, I bet we might have some questions about that. Yeah, someone did have a comment. Uh, William said that the customer success plan should also have specific metrics, such as yes. uh, baseline improvement target date, uh, to measure progress and demonstrate customer value, which is very true. I agree. So as you go through executing the success plan and also, you know, when you do these kind of goals, another uh, column here is to add what are the KPIs, what are the quantitative uh, metrics that you're going to achieve and agree with the clients on that. Perfect. Okay. So systems and tools, this is our last section. If you kind of look like this all day long, typing emails and and answering phone calls and just being super reactive, you know that there's something else that you can do to become more proactive. So I actually attended a, a this you know a presentation by Katie Rogers in September, and she did an absolutely phenomenal job. That presentation is actually available in this link if you wanted to attend it. But this is one of my takeaways. She shared a few tools that she highly recommended using that made her team more productive. So I'm going to go through a couple of them. One is Calendly. I'm personally using HubSpot uh, as a calendar tool, but it, it all drives to the same, there's a bunch of them, but it all drives to the same point where it helped her team to avoid the dreadful double booking. And also one thing, one area that she, she mentioned that I thought was really interesting is that this tool actually allows you to create personalized calendars for your strategic customers. So when they log in, they see that this is their calendar with you, and you can see that you can actually schedule different types of meetings so that you know what you're walking into. Uh, I highly recommend using it. None of these tools, by the way, is very expensive or anything, but it will make your life a lot easier. Another tool that she recommends, and I have used this, I don't know, in the last three or four years, so I vouch for this one, is Boomerang. And Boomerang has a Google extension for both mail and calendar. Um, and so you can uh, resend a message, message if nobody replies. You can send it later. Um, you can also, what this doesn't show, is that you can, so this just helps you uh, make sure that you ping your customer again if you absolutely want to make sure that they answer you. Um, but it also allows you to book meetings directly from your email and um, showcase your availability in a very visual way. It just makes life easier and uh, you will increase your productivity by, by using this uh, solution. A text. All right. You remember how we talked about retyping the same things again and again. If you don't have a CSM solution or you don't have, I don't know, all these other fancy email uh, things, one of the things that um, Katie shared is that 
you know, if you have an email that you type over and over again with the same or different customers, it's like your welcome announcement, you can actually take the whole thing and create a shortcut just like this one, right? It types like basically four letters, T-Y-E-M, thank you in whatever, and then uh, you click on control enter and the entire thing populates. It's crazy. I actually use it. Um, I started using it after she shared it. I was like, what is that? I got I to gotta learn. And the first things that I've done were just very simple stuff. Like if there was a URL that I was sharing with uh, customers again and again, then I, I just created a shortcut for that instead of looking for that URL. Uh, but this, this is a game changer. Um, Ellie Wu for, um, is also a blogger. She has a lot of these nice nifty blogs with lots of tips for customer success and she had one uh, that she emailed me about her top five customer success productivity booster I'm just gonna share two but if you wanted to see the entire blog you can go to this link and actually highly recommend following her for quick tips on an ongoing basis uh, basically every time she goes to even a, a presentation or a meetup or a conference she's so good about just um, concisely showcase what she's learned so this is really great and she recommends two solutions active inbox and smart sheets I actually used both um, and I highly recommend them I think you want to even email her or ping her on LinkedIn and say could you show me how you're using smart sheet because her entire customer success team is using smart sheet uh, to manage collaboration um, and increase accountability and and do uh, even unnecessary anything like that like the whole almost customer journey they manage in Smartsheet and I thought it was a very interesting way of uh, leveraging uh, online spreadsheets if you will uh, to increase collaboration and productivity uh, working with clients and then John Layden has actually pinged me um, because I, I, I kind of added a post on LinkedIn you know what what are you using for productivity so it's not just my <laughs> thinking and he's using a collaboration tool called Trello I use Redbooth so there's a ton of other ones but it's really nice because it helps prioritize a list of uh, focused tasks uh, that are always available so you don't really tend to forget anything um, so I highly recommend if you don't have a collaboration solution yet that just allows you to manage tasks to go ahead and think about that um, he's also works with offline button in Outlook, and it's essentially it's this is it's essential to his productivity. I believe him. I don't. I, I don't really. Um, uh, you know, I could just recommend that you try it out. Um, and he also said that I thought was really whimsical. He said, "Does the art of gracefully saying no counts as a productivity tool?" I think yes. I thought it was uh, very uh, very funny. And now the holy grail of productivity tools um, CSM ops system so how many of you actually have one I'm gonna fire off a really quick poll just to see you know how long do I need to uh, share stuff with you so I'm gonna launch the poll and it's not just about having the CSM operation tool it's or a system in place it's about do you get enough out of it so um, I'm just going to give you a few minutes to just share and then I'm, I'm going to share some ideas of what do I do when I work with uh, my clients to get more out of the customer success system that they have already invested in. Okay, so about 50% of you voted. I'm going to share the results now. So as you can see, about 66% don't have a CSM system. So for you guys, um, just listen in and say, does this applicable? Do we think that there's going to be enough value for me to eventually invest in something like that? 17% uh, said yes, but I want to know more about, uh, you know, how to take more advantage of it. And 15% uh, said yes, they're fairly reactive or, you know, 6% said they don't really use it as much. So listen carefully to the next slide because if you do have a CSM system, there's a ton of ways that you can use it to become more productive. Um, and I am going to share six with you. Okay, did I share? Okay. So I'm going to share six ways that you can use your CSM system to become more productive. So as you look at this, ask yourself, am I using my system enough in all these different ways to become more productive and if there's anything missing here you might want to give it a try or even give me a call I'd be more than happy to look into it which really reminds me that 
bonus number two. If you have a CSM operational system, you're not using it enough, or you you're, maybe you're using your CSS system uh, like a Salesforce, go ahead and text help me scale to number 44222. So 44222 is the number you're texting help me scale uh, to. And the first 10 who will text this to me will actually get a free assessment of either how you use your Salesforce or your CSM solution. And the assessment is time consuming. So here's what we will get. This is why it's really a um, phenomenal bonus. We're gonna get, do a live review and discussions of your customer, uh, with your customer success technology experts. Really deep understand of, you know, are you doing it based on best practices? I'm gonna give you recommendations on how to scale your team without needing to purchase a different tool or investing in another, and really better insights to uh, understand your customer's data. Are you doing enough reports? Are you doing the right reports? Are you doing the right calls to action? Is there anything that you could do with the solution to become more productive? So lots of suggestions of either your Salesforce or your CSM solution. And um, as a result of this assessment, and I do this, usually I get paid thousands of dollars to do this assessment, uh, you will get an effective strategy and clear prioritization for enhancing productivity using your existing solutions. Uh, you'll get more value from your current CSM solution if you were to implement those recommendations. You'll get a more consistent delivery of your playbooks across your team members. You'll see an, an increase in collaboration. Uh, you'll get higher adoption, usage, and stickiness, not just for your product, but for the uh, solutions you, you have invested in. So go ahead and text, help me scale to 44222. The first 10 that text me will be, um, uh, you know, we will schedule this with them. And I can only afford 10 because it's so time consuming. It's so great. Um, okay, so what do you think? Have you learned some stuff? Are you excited to get some stuff implemented? I know I am excited for you. There's so, it's just really time for you to ask these three questions to yourself, to your team, Take the first step to becoming more productive, more efficient, more proactive, and really properly evaluate your customer segmentation. Do your staffing model, document your playbook and share them with others, and use the, all those new productivity tools that we might have shared on this, um, in this uh, particular segment to take your initial steps to ensure you and your team are proactive and strategic with your customers. It's your time and nothing I shared with you today is theory every single one of these strategies and tools are currently used by other customer success teams and they had been recommended by them and we've seen them work to really maximize their scalability and their efficiency with the entire customer base um, we have re these kind of results with clients all the time we significantly make customer success teams more proactive so use the playbooks that we shared with you to get a solid foundation for your customer success approach. Don't forget to just get started. Just do one single thing. Start with your own success plan. We're gonna share this template. Do the first step, the rest will follow. And if you haven't texted me yet, go ahead and text me. B, take the time to have a free assessment of either your CRM solution if you're using Salesforce or your CSM solution if you're using a CSM uh, um, operational system. We have our team and I are excited to be working with you and we're excited to be part of this community. This is like a workshop that we've done in one of our um, one of the customer success events. We always try to share our knowledge with others. We do software services, um, which really helps optimize or implement customer success uh, uh, systems of operation. We do a lot of strategy services, whether it's coaching to teams or executives that just need some help. And we come on site and do these kind of trainings with teams. So, uh, you know, just stay in touch with us. We have a Facebook page. We post links to interesting blogs there all the time. We have our own blog page where we post blogs um, and, and share our knowledge. And of course, you can follow me or the company at CSM Practice. So I wanna thank you for taking the time today to invest in yourself. This is so inspirational for me to see so many of you 
Uh, if you can't text, by the way, um, just email me at info at csmpractice.com. We'll count that as well. If there's any issues with the text messages um, and you're trying, you're not getting it, just, just go ahead and email info CSM practice to say uh, about a CSM software assessment or your webinar and I'll know what you're talking about. Okay, I think this was Sean saying that he has some difficulty. Um, I want to thank you for taking the time to attend today. This is inspirational for me. We take so much effort in building these webinars, these series for you. Uh, this is my way of being proactive and active in the customer success community. Please share what you've learned with others. Please come to our uh, additional uh, webinars. I'd love to hear from you. If anything worked, please stay in touch. Um, I'm, I'm now going to open it for questions uh, if you have any. Yeah, thank you so much, Yuri. That was a fantastic presentation. Um, yeah. Very inspired myself. And we do have some questions already, so maybe we can we can start there while some people send us additional ones. But um, someone was asking if you have uh, if you suggest uh, any tool to help show when users are going into yellow red. That's Margot, and she says uh, she's using Intercom right now. Yeah, Intercom is a really great start. Like if you're a startup, uh, it's probably um, very cost effective. I have some customers that are using mixed panel. Uh, Pendo, I believe, is another one. And of course, all the CSM, all the customer success operations solutions will also provide you with a way to track health score. So from, can I mention other, you know what, I'm not going to do it. This, this Amity can help you. Amity can help you. And there's other tools like Amity that you can research online. I'm not going to mention them here because we really, really love to, to have you consider Amity as your tool of choice to track customers as a red, yellow, green. <laughs> Thanks, Reed. Um We do have another question, so uh, maybe take another minute to to answer it. But going back on that segmentation, uh, uh, on that segmentation topic. So, just reminding everyone, our next webinar is about segmentation and engagement models. So, uh, we'll have more time then to answer a lot of a lot of in, in depth questions. But someone is asking though, um, in a B two B company, uh, even if a, if a company is an SMB company. Um, they, wouldn't there be a potential for upsells afterwards? And um, because of that, uh, wouldn't onboarding have to be more of a high touch model? Uh, yeah, I mean, it could be that your SMBs are actually super important to you and you will assign a CSM for each. So that's why, you know, you should take everything I say in a caveat because it really depends on your business model. Um, Tech touch is great when you have tens of thousands of customers. And by the way, a, a, a good or an effective tech touch could inspire um, upsells and cross sells, even if you have a more of a, a tech touch approach. So, for example, I had one customer that had tens of thousands of customers, but they had a way of sending an email out whenever a customer, for example, uh, started using a new feature. So they were tracking usage, and when they were starting to add uh, a new feature into play, which they knew was a little bit more complex, they upsold them on a professional services package because they knew that A, that would make the client greener if they did uh, invest in it, and B, that's an additional upsell opportunity. So there's a lot of ways that you can approach this, and um, always take what I say and say, does this make sense for my business? Uh, because every business is different and it could be that your business only deals with SMBs. So, of course, you're going to give them some sort, or at least some of them, some sort of a high touch model. Yeah, great. Yeah, great. Um, someone, Joan is asking what your favorite book on, on customer success is. <laughs> you know, most of the books are written by software companies. So, um, <laughs> but I would say that there's probably three or four that you should read. Um, and if you go to Amazon and type in customer success, they will pop up. Great. Um, it's 2.14. Do you want to, uh, if anyone else has any other questions, uh, and if if they have time, I have time. So I think you do too, Irit. <laughs> <laughs> I think just what I'm seeing is like some of the guys that were participating in the session had some really cool ideas that they wanted to share with others. So. Uh, hopefully we can compile some of these suggestions into a blog or some sort of a resource that we can share later. Like, um, 
Uh, oh, Aaron is asking, can you also add the link from Ellie Wu? Um, Hmm, interesting. I thought I thought I did share the, the link. Okay, so basically we're gonna share the recording. You can see the links and uh, Sanjeet Reen says text expander for Mac and iOS is a phenomenal re kind of like a text. So there's a lot of good suggestions here. I'd love to share those with you as well. So we, we're gonna brainstorm until after the webinar and see if there's anything that we can do to, to take all these comments and, and share them in a more productive manner. For sure, yeah. Absolutely, and um, I think a lot of people were asking about both the next session and the last session in the recording. So uh, we will be sending a follow-up email uh, before the weekend, and that will be coming from me. So if if you want to get those links and, and you can't find them, then just answer to my email directly to me, and I'll be happy to send you um, to send you all the links that you need. Yeah, and also keep in touch with me. I'm on LinkedIn. You can connect with me, um, email me questions if you have, and we haven't had a chance to address those in this webinar. I'd love to keep in touch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So we definitely haven't really been able to answer all of the questions, but uh, everyone, thank you so much for being so engaged and for all the questions in the comments that you sent us. Um, this is really, it's always the most fun when it's like that. Um, so yeah, I think, um, you do you want to wrap things up now then? Um, yeah, I think uh, maybe the next step is, you know, if any of this was interesting, just keep in touch. Keep, um, I'd love to see you again in our webinar. Please tweet about this uh, if you enjoyed this presentation. And, of course, um, sign up for our next webinars as well. Awesome, yeah. And uh, just very quickly before we go, if anyone is interested in hearing about Amity, uh, so Amity is a customer success management software, and uh, we help CSMs grow, acquire, and retain uh, their customers um, through engagement, monitoring, and health health scores and things like that. So if you want to head over to the Get Amity website, you can click on Request a Demo, and we would love to set something up with you and give you a tour. So yeah. Okay, thanks guys. Have a awesome. good one. And don't forget to recommend us to others if you like this. Yeah, definitely. And invite all of your friends to the coming coming sessions if you think they're valuable. Yeah. Uh, Eri, thank you so much for all of this. And uh, everyone, thank you so much for, for joining us today and for all of your kind words. Um, seeing a lot of thank you, thank you. You guys are welcome. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> thank you guys. Awesome. Have a great day, guys. Bye.